Thursday, Steve study, study day. day. Woo! This is the day he studies. That's yep. right. That's right. We're praying for him because his message touches so many around the world, and yep. we'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm uh, Pastor Scott. And we Phil got a guest. Monty's with us. We got our brother Phil. Yeah. And uh, it's such a good show yesterday. We've got a great show. We've got a scripture for the day. We're going to pray over the day. Yeah. And we want to thank you for taking the time to help make us the number one daily Bible study on YouTube. Type in your uh, name when you subscribe to us. And we like to read that on Wednesdays. Don't forget to leave your comments. And uh, today we're going to be in John chapter 1, though. Yeah, yep. it's such a great, great, uh, if you haven't watched it, you need to make sure that you watch the, the leadership conference. Yeah. And uh, uh, pa Pastor Phil was on fire. Yes, yes. Just going. And it's, it's just so many things that I believe that we need as we're discovering some stuff we'll talk about today of the, the questions that we need to ask ourselves. Absolutely. We're talking about uh, John chapter 1, verse 19 through 27. An incredible conversation that takes place between the priest and John the Baptist, who Jesus called the greatest person that ever lived. So you want to like have E.F. Hutton I'm ears, as we two. used to say. Yeah, I'm hoping. exactly. And, uh, and so uh, actually John the Baptist was the greatest John the Baptist ever. <laughs> he was. And you was are the greatest the Scott, Scott Anderson. ever. And I am the greatest because Phil Muncy in the history of the world. I'm second place. <laughs> and Jason you Anderson. are Oh, you're the one. second best yeah. Jason. There's a guy that rides motocross and he is, I'll admit, yeah. he's better than me. No, 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 no. <laughs> So here's the five questions you should ask and know. Number one, who are you? Your identity really determines your effectiveness of your destiny. Number two, who you are not. So mm. Often we spend too much time trying to be like somebody else are. We're doing too many things that we're not graced for. Mm. This is important. Jesus said in John 15, look, if it's not bearing fruit, pluck it out. If it's bearing fruit, prune it. And so you can have more. I mean, you're pruned if you do, you're pruned if you don't. You know what I'm saying? The <laughs> ideal is, is as you get older in life, <laughs> you want to do less of the mediocre things mm. and more of the great things. Yeah. When I was young, my favorite scripture was, I can do all things to Christ. Now that I'm 64, this one thing I do. <laughs> this one thing I do. And that's important yeah. to know who you are, know who you're not. The third question is also something very unique. They said to John the Baptist, who do you say that you are? We're going to go back. Tell us what you say you are. Wow. Now, this takes the number one and number two question to a whole nother level because now you have to articulate mm. who you are. You can have all these thoughts. Yeah, I guess I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I guess God thinks of me and God thinks good of me and God put much thought into me. But hey, uh, you know, and all of, and you have to take the effort to articulate and to be able to say what I call, or it's been called the elevator pitch. So you know what that is, right? So you, it's the idea that you would get in the elevator with your boss, the person that carries all of the power to make positive uh, impact in your life. And you got 90 seconds to make your pitch, right? You need to make that pitch because you know who needs to hear it more than anybody? Mm. You, do. you do. You need to be able to look in that mirror and you need to say, this is who I am. This is who I'm not. And articulate it and own it. And be assured that it's fluid. It flows. As life changes, even as you reach your dreams, sometimes success can be more of a handicap mm. than even failures. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep adjusting and keep articulating who do you say that you are? This is so important. Then the fourth question was, why? Why do you do what you do? You're baptizing and you're doing this. Why? It's so important to know your why. What is your just cause? You see, if you got a why, you don't have to worry about the how. If you have the why, you'll overcome every obstacle. If you have your why, then you'll overcome everything. That why needs to be burning inside your heart. The Bible says of Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because. What's your be cause? And you can come to that by answering three quick questions. And the third one, Doug tells into the last question of this incredible dialogue. And that is number one, what makes me tick? Mm -hmm. What makes me ticked? Mm -hmm. And what trickle down equity do I have access to what is the in my you DNA? You saying the second word. I don't know what it is. Ticked. What's that? Mad. Ticked. Like I'm ticked off. So oh, ticked. Yeah. I thought there was a T-I-T. -I, -T. I, I no. kept hearing the wrong. Yeah. And I went, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. No, I, nope. Every time I heard no, it. Nope. Not that word. Nope. 
No, I'm just saying. I, I go, I don't think that's what he's so, saying. No. Here, let's say it another way. Maybe my what mind makes, is in the wrong place. Yes. I'll what, let it sit right next make, to me. Oh, maybe that was it. What makes you glad? What makes you mad? How okay. about that? Oh, that the, right. the other right. word makes... There you go. Hey, no? oh, yeah. So in other words, <laughs> God go. has... We're waking you up, man. <laughs> Wake up! If you missed it, you're not awake yet. So there's a, a simple little test. It goes like this. God gives you the desires of your heart and you can trust them. God has not put a mystery behind. I love this uh, part. This is um, so good. No, what your why is. You don't have to say, oh God, show me my why. Give me my cause. It's already right there. It's talking to you. The Bible yeah. says he gives you the desires of your heart. Trust them. I think this I is know. my favorite part of yeah. your teaching. You like to, to go to the, the, the yeah. desire part. Yeah, because I think it's important because a lot of people think that God gives you the desires of your heart and they miss the whole point. Right. Because that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says he gives you the desires of your heart. <laughs> I love You're this. not quite awake yet. Let me say it one Do more it time. Again. Do it. That God gives you the desires of your heart. Oh, yeah. See, God gives you the desires of your heart. So you desire the desires he desires you to desire. So that when you desire the desires he wants you to desire, he then gives you those desires that he desired you to desire that you finally desired. I want to stand. He Don't so make good. me repeat that. It it's too early. so good. In Here's summary, the thing. he gets you to do... He gets you to want to do what he wants you to do. Exactly. You. Trust your gut. I always say yeah. this, gut checks rarely bounce. You uh -huh. can trust them. Now, once in a while you get off target because you compare yourself, you forget yeah. your identity. And here's a simple question. How do you know the difference between a dream and a scheme? Here's the difference between a dream and a scheme. If your dream comes true, if it comes true, who benefits the most? Others are you. If you're the only one that benefits from your dreams, it's not a dream, it's a scheme. Because dreams are God's way of putting a desire in your heart so then when you go after it, you solve problems, you make life better for everyone else. That's the power that's of stepping into your wife. That's Joseph's dream. Yeah. Joseph's dream yeah. was to save all of Egypt and the surrounding and everybody else. Exactly. That wasn't a scheme. It was a dream. He got his dream to be the great leader. That was the dream. Yep. But the dream saved the world. It saved a remnant in Israel. It saved his family. That's right. right. Your cause is to expand the purpose of God. And Ooh. it's right there in your heart. Number two, what makes you mad? Oh, Mad. What hurts you? And when a doctor says, where does it hurt? I tell people that I help trying to find their purpose. I say, where do you hurt? What do you mean, Pastor? Well, you see, there are some experiences in life that we have that God, we forgive, we let it go, it leaves. And there are other things that are painful. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel vexed. We feel like that we have experienced something in life and it doesn't go away. Listen to that voice too. So good. Because we're driven to our purpose by passion. And most people think passion is this emotional or romantic energizer that you get. Oh, I have such a passion. But the word passion actually means to have suffered, to have been vexed. Remember the movie, The Passion of the Christ? Mm -hmm. It really means the suffering of the Christ. So you see, God takes certain parts of our life that we think are not redeemable, pain and hurt, what he does is says, look, I'm going to redeem that, but I'm going to use your hurt to drive you into your cause. And you're going to make sure that no one else faces what you went through like you did, because this is your calling. So a lot of people want to numb their pain. They want to walk away from what they've suffered when really oftentimes it's telling you this is your why. Mm. And then lastly, he makes, John the Baptist makes this statement. There is one who's following me of whom is going to be even greater than me. The greatest thing you can do with your life is to know who's following you. Mm -hmm. Because everything you do is virtually useless if it doesn't get passed on to someone else, to the next generation. Don't do life alone. This is why coming to this church and being a part of a church family, you have to build a legacy and it takes a community to build a legacy. Who are you mentoring? Who are you being mentoring by? You know, it's a lot easier, just as a simple example, it's a lot easier to do everything yourself. Sure. It takes actually more time to explain to somebody else what you're doing, to ask, answer their questions. But this is how you build a legacy. So success is not success if there's no succession. 
And that means that even now, don't wait until you're tired and old and you think, well, I'm going to give my business over to somebody else or somebody else will pick it up. Even now, John the Baptist, before he ever began, mm -hmm. was already thinking, I know what I'm doing is preparing the way yes. for the next. There's no greater mandate on your life mm -hmm. than to make sure that your life outlives you to someone else. That's how you awaken to your greatness. You know what vexes me? <laughs> you get your fruity pebbles out, you put the bowl in, you open the refrigerator, there's three cartons of milk in there, and you take the first one and there's no milk in it, and the second one there's no milk in it, and the third has no milk. The kids use the milk and then put the And no cartons. one wants the dribble. Why, uh, and why is it we don't want the dribble? I don't know, there's nothing good why in the dribble. Why don't the dribble, dribble that you don't want? No, Just throw it away. Yeah. It takes more effort to put it back in the fridge yes. than it does just throw it away in the trash. That That's, pains that you. Me. That pains me greatly. Well, you know what? God. This is God saying he wants you to have a ministry. A cereal and milk. probably write a book about how to put milk cartons and empty oh, containers Lord, feel in the, the garden. This could be a next New generation. York best-selling book. <laughs> you see, Maybe there's purpose in your pain. It's a metaphor for getting rid of the things that are useful in your life. Oh, it's really about good. pruning the prunes. And we're talking with, we have a conversation with Joel Osteen for the next few shows as we, we talk about, don't put the sour milk back in what you're thinking yeah. about, yeah. but instead put the right stuff in your refrigerator in a yeah. sense. Yeah, Joel Osteen's written a new book and, and we reached out to him to talk to him about it. And so we're, the next three shows will be uh, some clips of us talking to him about his new book. Yeah, so first of all, I just want to say just a quick question. How does it feel to be uh, close friends with Joel Osteen? My buddy. That with, that watch. Yeah. He just... He just has his latest book, and he could call a thousand pastors. Hey, and he calls you guys today <laughs> to discuss. I want to. How did that happen? I just. How did? How does? How does the Anderson brothers? It's wait? how God does it. Yeah. Okay. So, we and so okay. him and I will talk about I love that your lunch humility. today. Yep. I love okay, it. So we'll we'll chat. I'll figure it out. <laughs> no, but you do. You go. You go. Uh, well, you know, how? Like how did that happen? I don't know. Yep. Uh, like they don't deserve that. No, we agree. We, <laughs> <laughs> we agree. <laughs> It's all the views. I don't know, but so, it's yeah, he's honor. like, oh, I want to get on that wake up show. It's an honor right. to have him. That's right. And, uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun for sure. You want to pray over them? I do. Father, thank you today for our friends. May they wake up to the greatness that's inside them as they ponder these questions: Who am I? Who am I not? What do I say that mm -hmm. I am and that I'm not? And that why God awaken it inside me, and Lord, let me live a life that outlives me. I can live forever on this earth if I recognize my responsibility and right to transfer, to help, to mentor, to have people that I'm aware of that's following me. Mm. Today's going to be a great day for you. All right. We love you. God bless you. And if you mm. want to watch the teaching, what do they do? Well, they're going to be able to click the screen, I guess, and go right to it. Or also go to the description and follow the links to the actual teaching that he taught. And you're, like, you're watching this. You're like, oh, I'm hungry for more. Uh, click that link. Don't forget to share it. Like it. And be in where on Sunday? Wherever you live, find a good church near you. Try and go in safely. If you can find a good <laughs> church safely and then, uh, or go to the drive-in, maybe they have a drive-in. Uh, watch on the stream with your family. If you're within 500 miles, get here. <laughs> church Alive is worth the drive. the drive. Love you all, see you tomorrow.